Yeah, it does make me sad. I mean, because these movies, well, first of all, they call it content. You know, you know what content is? Do you have a cat? Do you have, <laughs> I do not. Well, I have a couple cats. So, yeah. you, you know, you have the litter box. Well, you know what's inside the litter box? That's content. That's just <laughs> you put in there, right, to take up space. And that's what they call, you know, what they make now. It's not called art. It's not called, yeah. you know, this is my vision. It's called fucking content. And so yeah. just the fact that they call it that offends me because you're already resigning it to this is something I made that means a lot to me that could fill up 45 minutes. You know, that's that's like it. Hey, man, welcome back to Cutting Through, everybody. We really appreciate you guys watching us. I'm here with my co-host, uh, Mike Gatto. Mike, thank you. Down there in Los Angeles. Great to be here as always. Great to be Great here. Great to see you, man. Uh, we both have kind of light colored sport coats today. I wonder what happened. Well, you know, it's it's hotter than heck and it's past Memorial Day, so I believe these colors are permissible. I always you know, I always think you go to bed in a tie. I don't know why, but I do. I, yeah, I you do. do. Yeah. No, I make Absolutely. my butler take mine off before I go because I don't want to choke. So he's well, I, I like to change into a dressing gown, uh, <laughs> yeah, a silk dressing, a dressing gown, gown. Yes. like like Ebenezer Scrooge when he's well, going yeah, through the nightmares. <laughs> so we had yeah. uh, one of the things that was on my mind, Mike, and I don't know if you agree with me, but I wanted to discuss it a little bit with you. And that was this huge Hollywood weekend um, uh, this past weekend for and I'm not going to say that term that people I hate when people combine words. I hate it. Um with the Barbie movie and Oppenheimer. Um, so that was a, that was a huge deal this weekend, right? I mean, if I'm looking at the numbers correctly, um, it looks like, you know, worldwide or internationally, Barbie brought in 182 million and Oppenheimer, you know, a three hour movie about a scientist brought in almost a hundred million. But isn't that isn't that just like you know Europe is seeing this crazy crazy uh, uh, renaissance for tourism? Isn't this still an outgrowth of the pandemic? Where you know finally this year the last holdouts, the last people who are masking and shutter, uh, sh sheltering in place in their homes have finally started to reemerge, and they want to see things in the theaters, and they want to travel the world. So you're seeing all the like live things, concerts, movies, and really? travel. I haven't thought of that. Renaissance, yeah. I haven't thought of that because yeah. honestly, you know me, I didn't. I don't think I sheltered a single day. Um, <laughs> but so I haven't thought of that. Do you think that that might? Oh, let me ask you a question. You're down in L.A., right? Yes. Are there people like around you that are still like very sensitive about this issue? Like they still mask. I'll up? tell you. I'll tell you two anecdotes. I have a buddy who is a. Um, he's a healthy relatively young guy and uh he was just in the los angeles times uh, for a story that i can't relate but it was it was all legit right and he was helping out some people who had just come to los angeles and the picture of him that was on the front page of the la times was him outdoors wearing a mask oh. and, and then on top of that i happen to be very good friends with a with a hollywood actress she's a household name She's involved in Democratic Party circles. I send her fundraising emails from time to time, and we write each other quite a bit. And uh, she has written me back to every single invitation I've sent her in the last year uh, to political fundraisers saying, don't you know COVID is still a thing? Oh I'm still God. staying in my house. Like, what are you doing going to events? And uh, so, yeah. She's still in the house? Yep. Still in the house. How old is she? Uh, that I can't say. I mean, is she like in her 80s? No, no. Okay. Um, she okay. is, she's, I'll just say that she's older and people think she's younger. Okay. Um, All right. But still. Wow, man, that's amazing. It's amazing. That, that is wild. I had a guy at my gym, very fit guy too, with his family. Um, they were all like all coordinated and it's a very interesting family dynamic they have going there. And um, he wore a mask every day that he worked out and his son wore a mask and his, um, I'm assuming wife or mother of the kid wore a mask. And this weekend for the first time I saw them without masks. Yeah. <laughs> well, they must've went and seen, uh, Barbenheimer. <laughs> oh to my God. You said you. it. Don't say it. <laughs> but they must've went and seen it. So, so I, let me tell you what, the reason I brought it up is because those movies, you know, they did huge business, right. Or what we consider huge, huge business now after this, you know, that uh, the downside for Hollywood. Um, but 
I'm kind of happy because it seems like for one of the first times that we don't have a franchise, it's not a Marvel comic universe, it's not a Star Wars, it's not a Fast and Furious, it's not a Mission, you know what I mean? It seems like two original stories out there, and they're doing very well, and I I think I'm kind of happy, and I wanted to run that by you because, you know, you're down there, you've had a lot of work with Hollywood, and I think you represented a lot of studios, so... Like, what are your thoughts? Do you share my happiness for these guys, for the industry? I'm thrilled that that a movie came out that was not Fast and Furious 25. And I'm I'm happy that people are returning to theaters and everything like that. But, but you know, I am still rather, um, you know, disappointed at the state of Hollywood today. And even with these movies that have come out. Um, what I learned a few years ago, and, you know, it's no secret, that for the big tentpole productions, for the things that the Hollywood studios are actually green lighting, um, the big productions that people go to the theaters for, it has to have what's called, I think they have a term for it, like recognized intellectual property. And what they mean is it has to be a comic book, um, a best-selling book, a, a successful toy, uh, a sequel. And that's why, you know, if you think about the last few years, you know, Top Gun 2, um, you know, all the Marvel things, they all fit that description. And, you know, before you get that excited about these two movies whose names I will not combine, you know, keep in mind, Barbie, of course, is a long-standing successful toy. If they made a movie about the Muppets, I'm sure millions of Muppets fans would come out and watch it. And at the same time, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you can think about this as like Transformers, right? Yeah. Except. Yeah. With Good more, point. You know, G.I. Joe. Chris. Yeah, exactly. And, and then even Oppenheimer was a Pulitzer Prize winning best-selling book. That's what it was based on. So I, look, you probably know this. I don't know how many people in the audience do. I was raised without popular culture of any kind. Um, I haven't seen all the great movies of our generation, but it's still my understanding that a lot of the the epics, the ones that were fantastic, yeah. it was literally a guy or a gal who wrote a screenplay and went out there around Los Angeles and showed it to people at coffee shops. And every once in a while, one of them would get made into a movie and every once in a while, one would win an Academy Award. I think Rocky... Rocky, uh, Star Wars, the original Star Wars was actually an original thought. Yep. I mean, he borrowed from tropes and he borrowed from, you know, set set pieces, you know, but it was yep. an original story. Correct. You're right. Yep. Uh, it's my understanding that Star Wars was completely stolen from the 1958 Japanese film, The Hidden Fortress. Oh, shut up. And I've actually seen, I have not seen Star Wars, but I've seen the, uh, I've seen bits and pieces of the 1958 Japanese film. And it's fascinating because the movie starts with two characters. Uh, there's a short, portly character that is R2-D2-like, and there's a tall, skinny character. <laughs> and they're walking through the desert, oh. and they're scolding each other. And it's exactly, my understanding is, the opening scene from Star Wars, almost word for word. So, but anyway, What's the name of it again? Um, it's called The Hidden Fortress, and it's a 1958 Japanese. Really? Um, and I think it's... Um, Akira Kurosawa. Oh, I was going to uh, say, it must be Akira Kurosawa, yep. man. I mean, that's the only Japanese yep. director I know. So I had to throw him out there. But, but I mean, but still, you know, you look at a lot of the Oscar winning movies, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the 70s and 80s. Sure. Most of these films were, you know, based on a screenplay that was sold to sold to a somebody in a theater. I'm sorry, in a, in a, in a, in a studio who had subjective power to green light a film based on merit. And now it's not based on merit. It is money ball. It is dollars and cents. It is, has this concept, Barbie, does it have a, a, you know, a universe of devotees out there? Do Transformers, they sell a million toys. Well, you get a million people coming to the box office. And that makes me sad. Yeah, it does make me sad. I mean, because these movies, well, first of all, they call it content. You know, you know what content is? Do you have a cat? You have... <laughs> I do not. Well, I have couple cats so yeah. you, you know you have the litter box well you know what's inside the litter box that's content that's just <laughs> you put in there right to take up space and that's what they call you know what they make now it's not called art it's not called yeah. you know this is my vision it's called fucking content and so yeah. just the fact that they call it that offends me because you're already resigning it to this is something i made that means a lot to me that could fill up 45 minutes you know that's that's like yeah. it um and I feel that directors and producers, right, they are just green lighting things, as you said, which might, if they're not based off of some sort of a pre-existing intellectual property, um, that they're just going to be, a, it's an ROI calculation. That's it. And then these- Something even more depressing 
is um, I recently was connected with a guy who needed some help from me and um, his business model is very simple. He actually goes to the big pension funds that are chasing yield. You know, they have to make their 7.75% annual return. They can't get that through bonds. They can't get through the stock market. So they have to do some higher risk investments as well. And he goes to them and he says, look, I've got a formula. I've got a mathematical formula that will enable me to green light a movie for Netflix or Amazon Prime where we'll spend 4 million making it. It'll gross 5 million. That's a 20% rate of return. And, uh, you know, and I know exactly what sell and he does have a formula and the formula is like, you know, you need an old star two bankable star. Yeah. yeah it's one to two bankable stars mm -hmm. and this and that and this topic and this length. And then you got to pay for the front page. And, and it's just amazing how and it works, how, I mean, yeah. Um, huh. he, he, he alleges it works and he does have some investors who are very big fans of it, but you know, I mean, look, maybe, maybe there's a lot of people out there saying, look, Hollywood's always been a business. Yes, it has. But there's a few of us who like to delude ourselves. I think we're both in that camp, David. We like to say there's also an element of it that should be art. Yeah, I agree. You're, you're right. Um, you know, Mike, this has been fun. I appreciate it. Uh, haven't been to a movie in, I think, two and a half years. Not because of COVID. I just don't find anything interesting, to be honest. <laughs> I'm the same way, but I am going to see Oppenheimer. I yeah, I think I will too. Um, Mike, this has been fun. Look forward to the next time you're around. Let me know. Um, good to see you. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. If you like this, subscribe, share it with a friend. Appreciate it. Hey, if you like what you hear, like and subscribe. It really means a lot, and we would love to have you coming back every week. Thank you.